Hey everyone, welcome to this week's crypto update. So uh, a lot has gone on over the past 48, 72 hours. So I want to kind of give everybody a rundown of what's happening uh, and why the prices that you're seeing in the crypto market have been plummeting over the past few days. So last week there was some uh, rumors of FTX, which is a huge crypto exchange. I believe it's the second biggest in the world behind Binance. Um, rumors that they were going insolvent, which most people, including myself, kind of shook off because rumors, you know, like this happen from time to time and they never end up being true. And FTX is one of the biggest players in the game. So, you know, there was not really that much proof to substantiate such a claim until we got more, um, you know, circumstantial evidence of, uh, I guess, not really a partner company, but a related company because they have the same CEO, Sam Bankman Fried, who goes by STF. Um, the other company is called Alameda Research, and they do everything from uh, market making to basically uh, VC, early stage investing, um, their hedge fund. They do a lot, and, and they are very related to FTX. I don't think there's any formal relation, but the two, um, you know, they have, they, well, Sam isn't the, the CEO of Alameda anymore, um, but, you know, they still are linked in many ways. Uh, so we got a... Uh, a leaked apparent balance sheet, which later was confirmed to be accurate, that Alameda Research actually owned over $5.8 billion worth of the FTX token, uh, the, temp the ticker symbol of which is FTT. Uh, they had $1.16 billion worth of the Solana token, which is uh, heavily, heavily tied to Alameda and FTX, as well as a few other hedge funds. Uh, and they compared to that, so that's over that, around $7 billion worth of two altcoins. Compared to that, they had $134 million worth of cash, so 52 times more altcoins than cash, which is just kind of mind-blowing for a firm of that size. Um, obviously, if anything happened to either one of those coins, uh, they, they would be in a very bad situation. What makes it even worse is uh, $2.16 billion of the FTT that they had was being used as collateral. And another note to throw in here is that the 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 stake of FTT that they had was like the majority of all of the existing FTT coins, uh, so they were a major player in that. So um, it's a, a pretty illiquid coin. Obviously, they own most of it, uh, which makes them very tied to FTX. And yeah, they were using over 2.1 billion dollars of it as collateral, uh, which is just crazy, crazy irresponsible. Um, so on Saturday. There was, and this is how the story progresses, because uh, Binance actually comes into the story here. There was $530 million worth of FTT transferred onto Binance, which is a huge transaction. And like I said, FTT is, is very liquid. You don't really see that many big trades being done with it. You don't see big transfers like that. So that caught people's eye, especially after uh, all those rumors had circulated about FTX just like a week prior. Um, Turns out that that ended up being uh, the the CEO of Binance, or you know, a, a highly um, a high up person at Binance did that. Uh, they transferred 530 million dollars worth of FTT onto Binance, and then uh, CZ, who is the CEO of Binance, tweeted on Sunday that you know that they were going to essentially sell all of their FTT holdings, which is. Uh, which was, is highly detrimental to Alameda and to FT, FTX. Turns out that $530 million, I believe that was their entire stake, if not uh, close to that entire amount. Uh, but either way, it was enough to really cause a lot of damage to um, Alameda. And the, the current CEO of Alameda actually tweeted and offered to buy all of that FTT for $22 a coin. So... The, that was obviously um, that offer was denied, and the the coin went from twenty two dollars all the way down to fifteen on Sunday night. Now it's trading below four dollars. So all of that collateral that Alameda had, the the two point one six billion dollars of FTT collateral that they borrowed against, is basically worthless now. They're not going to be able to repay those loans, so they are in the hole for billions of dollars at least. Uh, so it's that's how the story progressed as of Sunday. There was some more interaction between SBF, the CEO of FTX, and CZ, the CEO of Binance, and the rumor started, or it wasn't really a rumor, it was more than that. It was kind of a uh, uh, an offer for 
CZ uh, and Binance to buy out FTX. It was kind of an open-ended offer, um, meaning that it hadn't been confirmed yet. They said they were going to look into FTX and, um, and potentially buy them out. That kind of got the market's hopes up very briefly. I think Bitcoin went from, uh, I don't know, 18,000-ish to uh, maybe a little over 21,000. So things rallied over the next couple hours after that offer was made. Um, and it was people knew about that because it was uh, tweeted out on Twitter. And then everything went back down and made new lows, including Bitcoin. Uh, went back down below 17,000. Um, and that's because uh, CZ later came back and said that, you know, the, F, the FTX situation is at a point where we really can't help them. And this is just crazy to me because, um, you know, FTX had billions of dollars worth of customer deposits. I think they were valued at like $30 billion based on their funding. And to see them go down because of $500 million worth of their coin sale is, you know, just suggests that there was a lot of a lot of foul play going on and misuse of customer deposits. There still hasn't really been any confirmed details on that, so I don't want to uh, say they're doing something that they're not. But I think you know, for now, uh, it's safe to speculate that consumer funds were mishandled for sure, and they're still not allowing withdrawals from their site. So if you have money in FTX, still can't get it out. There's a lot of whale traders, like some people that have tens of millions of dollars in FTX that cannot get it out. There are hedge funds and VC funds that keep a lot of their money with FTX that can't get it out. And that doesn't even begin to uh, account for all of the people and companies that that Alameda owes, owes money to, uh, which puts FTX further in the hole. So uh, very bad situation. It's going to lead to contagion. I think that's undoubtable at this point. But there is, you know, the silver lining in all this is, you know, we get better long-term entry point on crypto. I'm not, you know, this isn't financial advice. I'm not saying to go out and buy right now, but I want to give everybody an idea of, you know, how we can measure the capitulation um, or the, you know, the, the uh, extent of capitulation that's happening in the market right now. The number one way that I do this, I mean, there, there are probably a lot of ways to do it, but the number one way that I do is by looking at the percent of Bitcoin that's currently being held for a profit. This is the ultimate fear and, ga or fear and greed gauge. I know there are fear and greed indices out there, and I don't really like any of them um, because I think, you know, they don't account for the whole story. They, they can be at zero and then Bitcoin could fall another 20, 50 percent. Uh, so I, I don't really trust any of the fear and greed indexes out there. Um, the one thing I do trust, at least for the mid to long term, is the percent of Bitcoin being held for a profit. So when Bitcoin made a new low, uh, I believe it was on Tuesday, that, that went down to, uh, I believe, 49%. And then Wednesday night, it went down to 47%. So below 50 is historically where it's gone in bear markets historically. Usually it bottoms out somewhere between 40 and 45%. Um, we're not there yet, but to kind of smooth out the day-to-day -day noise, what I included in the Substack was a screenshot of the seven-day moving average of the percent of Bitcoin being held for a profit. And that right now is at 56.1%. So in, in previous bear markets, it's gone below 50. I'm not sure, I'm not saying that it's going to go below 50 this at this point, but the fact that we've now had two days in a row under 50 suggests that it's going to fall pretty quickly from 56%. Uh, earlier in the week, Sunday and Monday, it was, I believe, above 60%. So this fall is going to, you know, gradually um, bring down that seven-day moving average. So if it does get below 50, um, that's my kind of gauge for capitulation. And it seems that we are in a capitulation event. Um, as I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon, I'm not sure if it's done. I would say likely that it is not done yet. Uh, and but either way, you know, Bitcoin's at $17,000, which is where it was at the bottom in June. Uh, and, you know, long term, I, I think Bitcoin's going to be way, way higher than that, especially in the even in the next bull market. I think um, Bitcoin, as I've said before, is going to go 10 to 12 X up from the current bear market low. So if the current bear market low is $15,000, I would say that in the next bull market, it's going to go at least to uh, 150 to 180 thousand dollars in price, um, and I think that's relatively conservative considering 
all of the things going on geopolitically, um, the de-dollarization of many, many countries, the inflation in many, many currencies, where people really don't want to hold on to their currencies. They, you know, they're they're getting devalued like crazy. A lot of these countries have to trade in dollars, at least for now, but there is that effort going on to get away from the dollar. I think inevitably, some of these smaller countries especially are going to get out of the dollar or out of their own currency and get into Bitcoin. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of adoption over the next few years of Bitcoin, especially for smaller countries. And then as the market cap gets bigger and it can support more people, um, we'll start to see mid and large sized countries move to Bitcoin gradually. Uh, it's not gonna be an overnight thing, but the trend suggests that you know Bitcoin is too useful really to just fade out at this point. Um, it's, you know, if I had to pick one thing to own, one investment, it would be Bitcoin just because of the adoption that we're seeing, the fact that people are still holding too. Uh, so the, the amount of Bitcoin that's been held and not sold for a year is still right near all time highs. So this isn't scaring out the long term holders. Capitulation never really does. And so I think, you know, at this point, it's just it's an illiquid asset. Um, clearly not too many buyers. So when you see panic selling, it affects it more than it usually would. So that's that's kind of my rant on Bitcoin for now. Um, like I said, 10 to 12x, the, this bear market low is my target for the next bull market. I want to reiterate for Ethereum and altcoins too. So Ethereum, um, I'm, I'm thinking is going to go 20 to 25x uh, in the next bull market from this bear market low. So if Ethereum bottoms out at out at $500, which you know it might not go to the low. The low so far is about 900 bucks. If it goes to 500, that would mean that in the next bull market, I would project it going to um, $10,000 to $15,000 per coin. And for altcoins, and not all altcoins, uh, so I just want to clarify that the quality altcoins, like some of the ones that I've mentioned in previous articles, um, some of the DeFi ones, uh, Curve, Uniswap, Ave. Uh, some of these critical pieces of DeFi or the uh, the overall crypto infrastructure like Chainlink, I think those could even go up 30 to 100x in the next bull market from wherever they bottom out at. So um, just to give an example, Ave, if that bottoms out at $30, that would put it at you know 900 to $3,000 in the next bull market, which sounds completely insane. But the, the coins that the, the projects that survive this bull market are going to explode in the future because this, you know, the capitulations between, um, you know, UST and Terra and uh, and 3AC and now FTX and Alameda and, and everybody that they're linked to, which is probably, you know, dwarfs or uh, yeah, dwarfs 3AC and their connections, um, you know, it's washing out a lot of the trash from this industry, which is is painful in the short term, but long term, I think it's a, a kind of a blessing. So uh, long term, still very bullish on crypto. Um, who knows what will happen over the next few weeks as more gets uncovered about this situation. Uh, but I just wanted to give everybody my perspective and kind of a rundown on, on the events that have happened, because it, it can be kind of overwhelming uh, when when prices are going down and you know something's happening, but you kind of see conflicting messages on Twitter. Um, and a lot of speculation. So I wanted to clarify what's fact versus speculating too. So hopefully I got that across well. Um, but if you have any questions, definitely leave them below. Questions and comments, I would love to see. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching and I will see you again next week.